you have to schedule your time. Don't just stuff studying in to cracks in your schedule. Your schedule should be built around studying. What does this mean? This means have an exact set time during the day when you start to study. For me, I remember it was about 6 p.m. I would always say to myself, okay, 6 p.m., I get back from school, I rest a little bit, and then at 6 p.m., that's my study time. It starts. How long does it go? Well, that depends on how much assignments and homework I have, but it would go for at least an hour or two, and sometimes it would go for four or five or six hours. And it would start at six, and you would usually end like around nine or 10 or, or after that, and it would vary. But I think what's really important is to have that starting time, six, no matter what, six, sit down and study. Open the books, sit down, study. It doesn't have to be six for you, just come up with your own time. And you're doing this every single day. What's important about this is that it leads us to the next point, which is you have to get comfortable and you have to slow yourself down in order to study effectively. You can't rush the studying process. And one of the secrets that I use is simply brute force, right? A lot of the issues as a student that I dealt with, the things that I couldn't understand, I just brute forced them through repetition. And this repetition can take time. Also, you know, you have to be patient with yourself. Sometimes you're not gonna understand the problem right off the bat. So you just kind of repeat it, repeat it, mull it over, mull it over, and that means sometimes it takes you longer. So instead of finishing a quick little math assignment in an hour, it might take you three hours. But that's worth it if you calm yourself down, get comfortable, slow yourself down, kind of open yourself to absorbing this information. Right? This is where the love of it comes in. If you don't love it and what you're doing is you're just kind of rush studying through stuff just to learn it, like cramming for an exam, that's just horrible. That's horrible because all you're trying to do is you're jumping, you're like a dog jumping through hoops. That's basically what you are when you're doing that because you're saying to yourself, well, I got to pass this exam in order to get into college to get good grades so my parents like me. That's just hoops like a dog you're jumping through. Don't do that. Instead, what you think about is like this. Okay, this subject matter is really fascinating. Let me study more. Let me learn more. I want to know how math interconnects with, with history and I want to know how history interconnects with science and I want to know how this and this connect and, and I want to know more depth about this thing here. That's how you got to think. I don't think there's any magic in being successful. And I'm not talking about making a million dollars or a billion dollars. I'm just talking about being successful. I'm talking about being successful in what you guys do at work. I don't think there's any magic. You got to work hard. Yeah. You got to respect the people around you and you just gotta go. I've never met a successful person that doesn't work hard. There are two rules that I always adhere to, and that is to work hard and be brave. And I think the essence of, of hard work is one that's pretty straightforward, is that you'll never be the best looking, you'll never be the tallest, most talented, most capable, you'll never have the most money. There will always be someone who's better at whatever you're doing than, what, what you, than you are. But you can always be the hardest working person in the room. And I think the hardest working person will always win. Who must you become in order to create what you want? What has to change about you? What is it that you're doing right now that would be a liability for you? As you begin to look toward the future and take inventory of yourself, what is it about you right now that you've got to leave this behind? Because this no longer fits. Looking at where you want to go and the kind of person that you must become, the kind of standards that you have for you, what is it that you must do differently? Clear your mind of all distractions. I used to hold the record for the fastest to memorize a deck of cards in the United States. And sometimes before I would memorize a deck of cards, my brain would be worried about things in my life or things that were going on. So what I would do to clear my mind of all distractions is I would close my eyes and I would visualize those scenarios the way that I wish they were or the way that I hoped they would be one day. And then I would open my eyes I would be relieved of that stress and then I would memorize a deck of cards. Clear your mind of all distractions. Maybe close your eyes and visualize the things the way you wish they could be and then focus on your studying. Depending upon how well you want to do, particularly if you're starting a company, you need to work super hard. So what, what does super hard mean? Uh, well, when my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA and uh, we're, we're so hot up we had just one computer so the, 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 the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night seven days a week all the time um, and I, I uh, sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period and in order to be with me she had to sleep in the office so uh, 
work hard like in, in, I mean, every waking hour. That's that's the the thing I would I would say. If if you particularly if you're starting a company, um, and I mean, if you do simple math, you say like, okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, uh, you'll get twice as done as much done in the course of a year as the, as uh, the other company. If you want to learn something faster, you must first and foremost know the connection between what you want to learn and your dream life your real lifestyle that you want to have. I, I tell people all the time, like, don't just come up with things you want to learn, because guess what, we want to learn everything. By human build, we are curious animals. We're deathly curious. I mean, we are literally the curiosity killed the cat sort of society right now. Everyone wants to learn 50 new things immediately, but no one ever learns anything. Why? Because it's not real for them. It's a transient desire. If you want to become a great learner, it has to be attached to a dream life of yours. A true, uh, a true lifestyle that you see for yourself.